Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of uh, Visual Fire Development. That's a new one. <laughs> so today we're going to be creating a, as you can tell from the title, a City Skylines mod. Let's just go ahead and get started because I don't want to waste any more of your time. The first thing that we should do when we want to create a City Skylines mod is set up our environment. Now to set up our environment, first you need to uh, get a git ignore if you're trying to put it on GitHub, or all you have to do is create a folder on the desktop. So as you can see, I conveniently have a folder right here. Um, I have the git ignore. I also have a readme that was generated by GitHub, um, and I have the invisible.git folder. Uh, supposedly all of these would be invisible, but basically the only thing in the git ignore is the default uh, Visual Studio option that you can set when you make a new GitHub repository. So of course the first thing that you're going to need when you start coding uh, a City Skylines mod is Visual Studio. Now the main reason for this being a requirement is that this is a C Sharp mod. Um, and C Sharp is kind of like Java where it has to have a compiler before it can be run, unlike uh, Node.js or JavaScript, which are basically hand in hand. Um, so what we're going to use is Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition, uh, just because it's free and it's really easy to use. Uh, apparently Visual Studio 2019 is currently in the works, I didn't know about that, that's pretty cool. So I haven't tried that, but it will probably work. So once you have that downloaded and installed, uh, it's going to take a really long time, it is huge. Uh, but basically in the installer, let's see if I can get that up right now actually. So when you get into Visual Studio and it eventually kind of boots up, you're going to see a menu that it, it's loading right now, but you're going to see a menu that looks a lot like this. Now in here, the only thing that you really need is .NET development. Uh, everything else is, I mean, if you plan on making C++ or uh, universal Windows platform apps, or even Node.js apps the Visual Studio can do. But if you plan on doing any of these, feel free to check them, but they are huge. Like if I just check this C++ development, you can see it's 1.75 gigabytes. This alone was like two gigabytes. Um, so of course this is going to be kind of big. So it's probably going to take a while to download. So after that has completed downloading though, we need to launch Visual Studio. Once we've launched Visual Studio, of course, we're going to want to make a new project. So Visual Studio projects are very different from other projects in that a lot of the times they have many folders that you're not going to be very sure of what they do. But don't worry, I'm going to go through a lot of that with you. So to start, we're going to create a new project. And then we're going to click Visual C Sharp and choose Class Library .NET Framework. Now I like to use .NET Framework 4 or such. Uh, I'm not entirely sure traf uh, the traffic manager mod for City Skylines uses a version, I think it's like 3.6 or something, but I found that 4.1 or whatever tends to work for me. So we're gonna create a new mod of course. So we're just gonna call this tutorial mod and we're going to want to check create directory for this solution. Uh, once you've done that, feel free to choose a directory for this solution, of course. So we're going to go to our custom mod uh, and just select that folder. And then once we've made sure that we've spelt tutorial right, unlike my first video on my channel, we can go ahead and click OK. And it's going to set up this new project. So as expected, you're probably going to want to have City Skylines installed already. Uh, if not, go ahead and do that now. It's probably going to take a while as well. But we're going to rename our file here. A lot of the times we could just straight up delete this file and restart from the beginning, but I just like to rename the file because it's really easy. Um, so we can just rename this and we're going to rename this to tutorial mod. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, you can name it just mod or you can name it main or whatever you want to do. But this is going to be our main sort of mod file, if that makes sense. It's just going to contain information about the mod. It's not actually going to contain any of our actual code that I'll go over in part two. Um, it's going to ask you if you want to perform a rename of all references to the cult element. So that just means things like class this right here, the class itself, and any other references that you might have. Uh, once you've done that, just go ahead and save the file with control S or however else you want to save it and then you can close that file. Now there are a couple of things we need to do before we start coding uh, because 
technically right now, these, if you've ever coded in node.js, these are kind of like your requirements. So up here we have using system or using collections that generic. These are different quote unquote modules uh, that give us more functionality within C sharp. So there are handily references that City Skylines provides for us to create mods with. A really cool thing about City Skylines though is that most of the actual code that comprises City Skylines is not only there and available for us to use, but it's uh, not encrypted, which means that we can reverse engineer City Skylines without any issues in the future. Shut up, Snapchat. <laughs> uh, without any issues with encoding and all of this weird stuff that makes it impossible to reverse engineer things. So what this means is that we can override methods within City Skylines itself. Um, but for now, in the project setup tutorial, we're just going to get started with the name and the description of the mod. So the first thing we need to do is click on this little references thing here. By the way, my Visual Studio has Solution Explorer on the right. You can just click and drag these windows here to move them on sides of your screen. Uh, usually it starts on the right, but I, I like to have it on the left here and then have the output right below it, like this, as you can see. <laughs> So in our references, we want to right click on this and click add reference. And then within here, you see that it has a bunch of things or it might not have a bunch of things for you, but there are things. <laughs> uh, we need to click browse. And then conveniently, I have a shortcut to the city skylines install directory right here. But as you can see, it's in D program steam, steam apps, common, and then city skylines. Once you're in here, you want to go into cities data. Then you want to go into manage and within here there's going to be a bunch of things that you can import um, for your project. So the things that are recommended most is assembly C sharp, colossal managed, iCities, unity engine.ui, and unity engine. And I think that's it. Um, then you want to go ahead and click I. By the way, to select multiple at a time, I'm assuming you guys know this, but just to clarify, you can hold control while clicking on each one of them. Then go ahead and hit add. Once you've done this, click OK, and you'll see that these have been added into your references. Now that we have these imported, we can go ahead and actually start writing the beginnings of our code. So the first thing we're going to do is extend this class by a different class called iUserMod. Now you'll see right now that this actually is underlined and it's like, what is iUserMod? I don't know what this is. Uh, a quick and easy way to be able to import things that I like to do is pressing Alt Enter and then it will give you suggestions for things that you can do. So we're going to want to require iCities. Once we've required iCities, you can see that supposedly this red line is supposed to go away. But the only reason it hasn't is because we need to implement the name and description of our mod. After we've implemented iUserMod, what we're going to want to do is implement uh, the interface. So iUserMod is basically what's called an interface. And when you extend an interface, um, an interface has variables that are designed into it. So an interface cannot be used as code. I mean, I guess they could, but it's not recommended. <laughs> um, but when you extend an interface, it's going to require you to implement the variables that have been set in the interface. So you'll see here that this says it does not implement the member name. So the interface of iUserMod has a variable of name within. Uh, a quick and easy way to, to implement these is to press Alt and Enter. Uh, like we did to import it and hit implement interface. Once we've done this, I like to get rid of that space there. We can get rid of this throw not implemented exception because we're about to implement it and we can name our mod. This is a mod that a tutorial. And just like that, we have the beginnings of a mod. Now, I would say, let's go ahead and build it. Let's put it in the game and see if it works. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. There are some other things we have to set up. So don't mind me while I open up my uh, my other... Oh, jeez. So the first thing that we need to do to build our mod is go into our tutorial mod here, right click, and hit properties. You can double click on this, I guess, but I prefer to just right click and do this. Once we're here, we have everything here is correct. We want to go into build. All of that looks correct. So we go to build events. Now this is just to make life easier. Basically when you build 
a uh, Visual Studio project, let's go into our source files here. If I just select File Explorer and then go to the desktop and our custom mod, we can go into our uh, mod folder here and you can see here's the project and Visual Studio stuff. And once we're in the mod itself, we go into bin and go into debug and you'll see if we go in Visual Studio, hit build and build solution, it's gonna build our project. And if we go back here, you'll see that it has all of our requirements and the mod itself. Now, since all of our requirements are already loaded into the game, we don't actually have to copy all of these into the directory. Uh, so what is this directory that I'm talking about? Basically, City Skylines has a directory in your local app data that stores mods, and it's used for mod development like this. But the only way we can load our mod is to copy this over every time we build our mod. Luckily, Visual Studio can make this a lot easier by allowing us to do command line options after we've built our mod. So since I'm in Windows, I'm currently going to be using Markdur and Dell, uh, but theoretically Markdur should work in Mac and Remove would be your other one. Um, so what we're going to do is type Markdur uh, and then quotations, a dollar sign and parentheses, local app data, and this is basically a reference to your local app data. It's the same thing as opening run and typing percent local app data percent, uh, which as you can see opens up my app data. And then once we've done that, we go backslash colossal order. Sorry, it makes me, I'm very bad at typing that. Somehow the backslash didn't go in. Um, and then we go cities underscore skylines, add-ons, mods, and then dollar sign parentheses again, and target name. So what is this target name? Well, basically this target name is the same thing that you put up here. Now I'm not sure if it's the namespace or the assembly name, but either way, I like to keep these two the same. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the assembly name though. So let's go back to our build events. And now that we have this, we need to do one more. We're going to type dill and then local app data. Colossal order, cities, skylines, add-ons, mods, and then target name with an asterisk and a slash at the end. So basically, this will create a folder under the name of our mod, and then it will delete everything within that folder. That way we can put our new files for the mod in it. So now we type x copy slash y, and then we're going to type target dir this time. And then we figure out what the name of our file is going to be. So in this case, it is tutorialmod.dll. So I'll just copy that for convenience sake. Uh, no backslash between the parentheses here, uh, tutorialmod.dll. Um, and then we do local app data. Colossal order, cities, skylines, towns, mods, and then target name. Now, once we've done that, this should basically copy our file into the mods folder. So now, if I go to my mods folder right now, actually, we go to local app data, plus colossal order, slash city skylines, slash add on, slash mods you'll see that I currently have a mod that I've been working with uh, other developers in here already. And this mod creates its folder and puts its files in here. Now, as you can see, this mod is actually made up of multiple files. And this is if you really want to like sort or get a little more complicated with your mod, but we're not gonna have to worry about that right now. But that's the reason we create a folder is in case we do need to put more than one file inside of it for other dependencies. Once we've done these build events, go ahead and press Control S, and we're almost done. Uh, if we build our mod over and over and over, City Skylines doesn't have any way to detect that the file has updated. Now this is due to something called assembly, which is basically what builds the mod. So if we go within assembly info here, you'll see down here at the bottom, there's an assembly version and assembly file version. Now in the comments right here, it conveniently provides us with what we need to put in. So instead of 1.0.0.0, you can just do 1.0.star. And then I like to get rid of this. 
I don't know why, it's just always been something that I've gotten rid of. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why it's erring, I've never had this error before. That's odd. Ah, I see. Okay, so this is an error that I occurred uh, a while ago, and I like to keep these videos kind of uncut because I want you to be able to experience the same errors that I do, that way you can understand how to fix them. So this error clearly says when we hover over it, the specified version contains wildcards which are not compatible with determinism. So what is determinism? I have no idea, but Visual Studio tells us to disable it. So I tend to go in, so then we need to go back to our mods file, uh, which is here, and go into where our CS proj is. Or project is what that stands for, so I like to say CS proj or CS proj, however you want to, uh, J, however you want to say it. And then we need to open this with the text editor. So if you were to just drag this into Visual Studio, it's not going to work because this will just bring up our properties. We need to go within the actual CS project itself. So we use, I like to use Visual Studio Code, but you can always use Notepad or whatever. And I want no comments about my white theme. I am a white theme person. <laughs> Uh, and then you'll see right here we have a property in XML called deterministic. We change this from true to false. And then we can close, save and close the file. And now we hit reload once we go back into Visual Studio. And if we go back here, you'll see there are no longer any errors. So now if we build our project, you'll see that it says one succeeded and it says one file is copied. So we go up to our mods folder and you'll see we have tutorial mod. Now within here, we can go ahead and open up City Skylines. Okay, once we have City Skylines open, we can go ahead and close this box. I don't know why that's opening. And then if we go into our content manager and hit mods, we'll see that I have a lot of mods here, so I'm gonna have to search for it, but it should be the only mod for you unless you're subscribed to other mods. And you'll see that our mod is here. It says last updated a minute ago. And now we can turn it on and off. Um, yeah, that's fine, I don't care. <laughs> uh, so we can turn this on and off. And that's pretty much it. Don't ever hit this button here unless you actually want to get it off the file system because this will delete the file itself. Um, but basically we've created a mod. And you'll see that if we go back into Visual Studio and we hit build again, or sorry, we need to hit rebuild because it's the same exact file. And we go back here, you'll see it last updated one second ago. So it detected our update change and it uh, implemented accordingly. So thank you everybody so much for watching. In the next video I'm going to teach you how to reverse engineer um, a lot of the City Skylines code and then I will teach you how to create what is called a loading manager as well as creating what is called a log file. So I will see all of you guys in the next episode. Bye!